So I was aware of Echo Synthetic Fest months and months and months before the actual event. Um, I actually wanted to play at the festival, but didn't think that I could get a live set pulled together in time. It's gonna be really cool. It's um, one of my favorite genres of music. I wanted to go and, you know, just shoot a documentary. Um, it's the first documentary I've ever embarked on, so that's, uh, that's a thing. So Gene and I, we do a podcast together called Sharing Needles with Friends, where we talk about music a lot. Uh, and it's not about heroin, it's about record needles and stuff like that. Uh, and we also have done some short films. So Gene called me and asked me if I would help him shoot a documentary. Uh, I'm not well versed on Synthwave. Uh, I know the basics. I think of John Carpenter and old horror movies and stuff like that. That, that, that was the extent of my knowledge on the genre. I would love to lie and just say that, you know, we're doing this uh, to expose the world to Synthwave because a lot of people don't exactly know what that is. But it's for much more selfish reasons than that. You know, this, this is a festival that contains a, a bunch of friends that I've known and um, collaborated with through Twitter and various other social media platforms over the course of the last year or so. This will be the largest undertaking that I've ever ventured into as far as, as doing film. So I'm not worried about it, but it's, I don't know really what we're getting into here. And I sort of think that's, that's the most fun part about it. We're going to pack up tonight and pack up in the morning and then head down, get there midday. There's a house that everyone's staying at and uh, we're gonna go hang out and just uh, get as many interviews as we can prior to the show because Saturday is going to be crazy busy. So I wanna go, I wanna film as much as possible and then you know, hopefully just make something really cool out of that and have a great time doing it. My name is James Mitchell and I run Echo Synthetic. I'd always done work with blogs, uh, writing movie reviews, and doing some music reviews, but it, nothing ever really caught on. Um, you know, I'd get, you know, 20 hits, 30 hits, you know, and it's not about the hits, but at the same time, if you're going to put something out there, you want people to, you know, read it. You want the, to share that experience. The community around Synthwave makes the genre so exciting and awesome. Uh, you know, I don't just cover Synthwave, and I never really intended for Echo Synthetic to be a Synthwave blog. But the community around Synthwave is like none other. Um, and that's coming at somebody that was a musician. Like, I've never experienced anything like it, and that is. It's, it's just, it's rewarding every single day. This, just getting to meet and talk to everybody, I mean, it, it makes every extra hour in the wee hours of the morning that I'm, you know, riding on the side totally worth it. Nervous about today? Yes. Is the right 
where's the uh, where are your nerves sitting at? Like, what's uh, I mean, I know you're running this whole thing, so like, what's I guess the unexpected. I mean, I've never, I've, other than playing, you know, small shows as a teenager, yeah, I've never, uh, I've never done anything like this before. So the unexpected, I guess, is probably the thing I'm most nervous about. Luckily, there's a lot of musicians here, so that is true. certainly uh, a hive mind mentality will help this go smoothly. Absolutely, I saw they changed the uh, set list last minute. A little bit. Mm -hmm. That's always fun when that happens. A little happens. bit. Like, oh, hey, by the way, cut some time off your shows. Um, but I think uh, I think we're going to be able to squeeze everybody in. Do you think they were trying to do it to end the show earlier in the evening? Yes, yeah. And I, it was honestly a smart move. I just wish I would known about it, you know, yeah. earlier. Because uh, the original setup had uh, Majeure taking the stage at one. And who's, who really wants to be there that, that I mean, late? That, it does make sense. It's like Facehugger said last night. He's like, he's like, I don't care if anybody else even shows up. I'm just excited to play in front of you guys. And I mean, that really, you know, cemented that I that I'm doing the right thing. Cool hers. How's it feeling now that the show is imminent? Um, huh? It's feeling pretty good. Like everybody's been really helpful. The staff has been great. So I'm, uh, I'm feeling pretty good. Feeling good about it? Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have a good night. It's gonna be a lot of fun, regardless of how many people come in the door. Mm -hmm. We're here. That's right. I mean, like <laughs> we're making pentagrams in the parking lot. We have friends. We have love. We have. There's apparently beer in there. Yeah. I mean, like... Well, too, I just had, like, a random person just come up to me and say, thank you so much for putting this together. He had never even heard of the website. Man. He's just like, thank you for bringing Synthwave to Atlanta. See, this is what it's about right here, is because the scene is growing everywhere, but now Atlanta might be, like, the next spot for Synthwave to, 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 to hit, because that's, I don't know that's, where That's the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. And you're the man in charge of it. Working on it. It's gonna sound trite now, but it's so fucking true. It's John Carpenter, man, he did it. Escape from New York, it's a thing. It's Big Trouble in Little China, you know, I have a tattoo to prove it, man. Like, it, it's, that is it. I love the movies themselves, but it was really the music that drove a lot of it. And then I found myself just listening to soundtracks without watching the movies, and then I thought, I want to make soundtracks, but just soundtracks for movies that don't exist. There's always new artists all over the place, all the fucking time. And they don't have to play live to get recognition, which is cool, but I needed to. I needed to do that. And last February, I got my chance with Ghost. I learned so much. Making everything work on a live scale is such a learning experience, and I'm still learning.
I am in the box for the most part when it comes to writing and recording for the most part. I, you know, there's there's certain times that I work at with outboard hardware, this, this, that, and the other. I work with weird sounds and just random synth stuff and whatever patches. But with the live stuff, I do a combination of taking half done tracks and I put them together in kind of a DJ style, but I, I, I essentially DJ my own stuff. But I add extra layers to it live. Like there's gonna be a different synth part here or there's gonna be a different break here and it'll transition differently here into a new song or it'll go back to a different part or it'll just go somewhere completely different. You know, and I use live stuff to debut new material. I want to make sure that it sounds good in an awesome room before I want to put it on a record. Because the, the only way to play this music is loud. And that's the other reason I'm doing this, like what I'm doing, like staying on the darker side of things. I want to make a record that sounds so fucking heavy and so, like, I mean, I guess for lack of a better term, it sounds so metal, but there's nothing, there's no guitar, there's no nothing, it's completely in the box. Well, not completely in the box, but it's synthesized and I really want to try to create that. I hope I get it with the next one. Every show I play, it's gonna be a different order. It's always gonna be a different kind of set. Sometimes I'll have a more finished track than something else, or so I'll add something new to something just because I feel like it sounds good that day. And I'll do this transition instead of this transition. And I always try to change it because it's so easy for this to be boring live. Yeah. It's so fucking easy to make it a glorified club DJ set so easy. I'm trying to stay away from that as much as possible without sacrificing my freedom of movement. Because the one thing I like to do is go fucking crazy when I play. And I can only do so much of that if I'm constantly on controllers and keys and things like that. So I kind of try to find a happy medium. If there's a part where I can do some weird, like, kind of off-kilter solo, but not really a solo, just kind of just adding more layers to it, you know, I can. But then when something, when a heavy part comes, I want to bang my head against the, against the booth.
that was the house music, wasn't it? I would hear soundtracks and from video games, it's like, well, how are they making that? It's like, it's obviously all electronic, they're using a computer. I have a computer, what, what does it take to make that? Found out a lot of people liked FL Studio, played with it a bit, made some, some you know, now looking back, some just bad cheesy tracks, and uh, but just got my feet wet and knew that that was a program. Hey, you can make music with this. And then with games like Hotline Miami and Super Meat Boy, I just really like the soundtracks from those games. And it's like, okay, let me try my hand at making some original music again. I know that a lot of projects are you know, one person projects. And so on the one hand, it's kind of isolationist in that, yeah, you sit at a computer or a keyboard and you make your music and you do it in, in, you know, in a solitary way. It's, it's just you doing your thing. And then at some point you like, give it to the world and see what they say. So whenever I'm writing a song, just a new song, I'll just sit at FL Studio and I'll play around with notes and I'll just, I'll just discover melodies and patterns that are cool and then from that I'll build a song. So it's really a process of kind of discovery. Like I don't, I don't usually think of a tune or a melody you know, somewhere else and then bring it to the computer. I'll just play around and discover something, oh this is cool, and tinker with this or that and then just something grows out of that. And so when preparing for live, the music, the songs are, are set. And then it's all pre-programmed so that whatever point in the song that I need to play a certain sound, I've told it, okay, now you change to this VST, and now I'm playing this. So from one second to the next, the, the VST that, it, that I'm playing will change, but I'm still on the same MIDI keyboard. And so it's just a matter of me memorizing the notes, knowing when I need to play what, and just, that's it, play the notes, and play the song.
I'm really not big on the hardware side because I started with just messing around in the software and messing with the, the soft VSCs or soft synths and to see all, a bunch of these guys have hard, actual hardware is something I haven't really delved into much yet and just to see okay you know this does this this does that and how easy it is and portable some of it is too uh, and everybody has like you said a different approach uh, to creating their music and then performing it live. It's what are you comfortable with? How do you want to perform? And yeah, just where you are as a musician, how you, how you want it to, to come across. Because the one thing is, well, you want to look like you're doing something up on stage. So you need to be busy doing something. But you, ha you also want to be able to make sure that you can play it in that manner. You don't want to overcomplicate it unless you want to. But yeah, it's, it's really everyone has their own approach and taste and, and that's what's cool. Everybody's different because if, if everybody had the same act, yeah. like why would you have 10 people playing tonight if everybody was the same way? To me, Synthwave is like old horror movies, like you know, like I I hear Goblin, I hear John Carpenter, and I just like, to me, that's what I, that's what I gravitate to. Um, obviously, when you see Drive, you hear that mixed in with like a bunch of other elements, and it's like, takes you to another level. Obviously, a big thank you to James. Somewhere over here. Fucking amazing. I'm fucking out. I, I'm no one. I'm just fucking off your plane. I brought a lot of students with me. I'm gonna fuck up, so just bear with me. What drew me to Synthwave was insomnia. Like I couldn't sleep and I was just making music at night. And you can't make music with the band at your own hours. So it's just like making music on the fucking um, GarageBand app on the iPad, just fucking around on there. And that just snowballed into where I'm at now. GarageBand ever needed a poster boy of someone who could like get a little tiny bit of success off of GarageBand, I'd be it. kind of like as a musician you can't just like want to play this stuff live and not do anything so it's bringing the live sense in it was um just um I had to do something and not just fake it on stage I, I have zero personality like I have <laughs> I have zero charisma so I gotta like actually play something to make up for the lack of personality I have so as long as I have synths in front of me and I'm actually playing them I feel better about myself but <laughs> Aside from that, like it's um, that's the main reason. Like I just I don't have the personality to fake it on stage. Like I know some people can get away with like jumping around and shit and like hopping all over the place, but that's not me. Like I, I need to play something and I need to kind of show that I'm a musician. I know what I'm doing and it's not I can recreate the sounds and it's not it's not like a fluke um, thing. Like I run zero loops in my music. Like it's all what you hear in my music. I play it. The arpeggiators are running on some of the songs, but all of it is just all just me actually like playing the parts. So it's um, I got to do that when I play live. It's, it's it makes it 
it makes it so I don't get bored of it. It makes me want to do it more. When you see me live, you're gonna hear my songs, but it's like an alternate version of them. It's, it's, it's a live version of them, like actual synths playing them. So it, it gets a little repetitive, but at the same time, it's like I'm playing it live. So it's like I can't, I can't do much more than what I'm doing. This song is also Ultra. This song is also featuring the encounter who couldn't be here tonight, but he's here a little bit through this song, I guess. So I'll stop talking. I like playing it live. I like I like recreating my songs live and playing that live version. It's it's challenging and from from what I've noticed so far, people that play after me don't like that I play that way. They fucking tell me like, why the fuck do you have to play that way? Like I have to follow you after you play live synth? Like I'm just gonna go up there and play with like a MIDI controller, yeah. And you're fucking up there playing live. So that's kinda cool, like that's rewarding on its own. Um, it's a hit or miss with the crowd, but like I have fun with it, so I'm gonna keep doing it as long as I can, and yeah, it's, it's fun. I 100% I want to make better music for the people that already like me now get a better version of what they already have so that's like my main motivator is just to get better for people that already know me and future people like they'll, they'll catch on if they catch on to me they'll be like oh this is cool like you know like but I want the people who have seen me from the beginning to see how I gradually got better and stuff and I think for me, it's like I, I'm, I'm earning my badges right now, you know, like I'm, I'm, I'm going up the ranks and like this is like my not even my first year. It hasn't even been a year since I released my first album. Yeah, I'm opening for I've opened for Perturbator. I'm opening for Dance with the Dead, Betamax. I got some big shows lined up next year that I don't think I can announce yet. But it's like it's this is fucking insane. Like and on top of that, I feel like I haven't like what I I feel like the music I have released now isn't good. But my wife always tells me to not think that way, but I tell her I need to think that way in order for me to get better because I need that challenge to, 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 to challenge myself because I can't be content with what I made because I can easily fall into like, oh, this is all it takes, I'm good here. But for me, it's like I, I, I'm barely scratching the surface of, 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 of what I want to sound like. And I, I hope everyone 
that likes me now will stick along for the ride to see what I grow into because it's going to be it's going to be cool. I've never really listened to a lot of electronic music, but um, I ever since I could get a computer with audio on it, I've messed with making music on computers. Um, but I was never trying to make electronic music. I was always trying to like make rock or metal or whatever with very little resources on a computer, so it was always terrible. I heard Carpenter Brute and just listened to him constantly for like three or four weeks, and then I realized it was a whole like genre. and. Uh, I think I'm just always kind of, I'm the kind of guy where when I see something I like, I'm always like, I wonder if I can do that. And uh, I started doing it and uh, it, it really worked. Hey kids! How are y'all doing tonight? I'm so glad to hear it, so glad to hear it. How many of you guys here have seen Vampire Stepdad before? Awesome, awesome. How many of you have not? Welcome to the family. Now for you people who are new, this is going to be a little bit weird. But that's okay. Because over the next half hour or so, we're going to get to know each other. There's going to be a little back and forth. I'm going to play a little this. You can do a little bit of this. It's going to be super good. Does that sound cool? I like, to, I like to make my live stuff as close to the recording as possible, which is pretty easy since I play most of it out of the laptop that I make music on. There, can I get more of that in the monitors? I love to hear my own music. Uh, 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 yeah! Uh, I mean, the, my, my biggest concern with live, well, my biggest concern with recording, probably out of my own like, lack of self-confidence, is keeping the listener's interest. Um, you know, I'm, I'm always like, is this, is this going on too long? Do I need to add something new to, to keep it, you know, um, which I think is why a lot of my songs are kind of on the short side and, um, cause I'm like, ah, I hate this by now, you know, I don't know. Live, I think just coming from, you know, my background of, because every band I've ever been in has played live. Um, so making music and performing music are, have always been, you know, pretty much the same thing for me. Um, so my biggest concern live is just, you know, um, you know, playing what I've made and put on a good show and engaging with the audience and, and keeping them interested. Can I get a little more keyboard in the monitor here?
originally, when I started Vampire Stepdad, I had no intention of ever playing live. It's a symptom of the whole bedroom producer thing. You know, we're all making this in our, in our extra room or whatever, and um, you have low expectations, you know, so. Um, yeah, I mean, literally anybody can buy the equipment to make all this music, and you know, you can get away with just, you know, mousing it in. And, um, um, and I mean, some people make great music that way. It doesn't surprise me that that that's how a lot of people, you know, start. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, live. I, I just want to put on a good show, and 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 you know, I like to kind of go through a you know different uh, peaks and valleys, and 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 you know, just have a good time. You know, I know a lot of times when I'm doing stuff, I'm just kind of like, you know, throwing it at the wall and seeing what sticks uh, and trying crazy things and, hey, they work out. The past, like, year and a half uh, with Vampire Stepdad in my life, uh, I've, I've found it extremely rewarding. Um, it's been a way, I, I, I've been able to really speak as myself through Vampire Stepdad very well. And sometimes I find myself in situations where I want to be more negative or just, you know, I'm in a shitty mood and whatever. Um, and then I'm like, well, let's keep this light. You know, this is been you know. Honestly, uh, the vampire stepdad has been like one of the best things ever happened. I can like kind of trace everything back to a, you know a couple early moments in my life where you know seeing Blade Runner at like 10 that was a big moment and then hearing like Kraftwerk for the first time bands like Trans Am even Rush with their you know the amount of synths that they use and things like that Steve and I, my bandmate and zombie, you know, we'll see, we'll see things that describe us as synthwave, and we're like, I don't know if that's really the case, because we're, it doesn't really seem like, I can't think of um, any, anyone that would be considered in that genre that uses like uh, live drums or like goes at it with a rock band approach, which is basically all zombie is, is just a straight up rock band with 
we just use synthesizers. But because we kind of dabble in some other some areas, maybe. So like there was a sound that I really liked, but then I also played drums, but I really liked the sound of analog synthesizers with drums and with acoustic instruments as well. So that's where Zombie came out of. So I think that it's still like all draws from that. Um, and if I, if it was like financially possible, it would be nicer to have a band around what I do. So I could play drums, that would be really great. But um, I also do really like drum machines and, and the like relentlessness of what a drum machine can do and the way they sound. So yeah, I'm just trying to like pull it all together and see what, see what comes out. But yeah, it, it, it does like, kind of keep going back to like these same origin points. There was a point when, when I, when I first did this, it was a point when, um, I think it was like 2009 when I did my first record and I had no, I just like recorded a few songs and Sent it, uh, sent it to Temporary Resonance Records, and Jeremy Devine was like, "I love this, I want to put it out." So he, he did, and then I didn't expect to ever do anything live. And then people started asking me to do it, and I was like, "Well, I don't know what I'm going to do." But I, I had just got Ableton. I was like, "Okay, I'm going to give this a shot," and that's how that all started. So at the beginning, I was just taking songs that I'd already written and just throwing drum machines under them. And it would give me some creativity to do whatever I wanted with them. A few years, like sets that I would play live, I just kind of would take some very loose ideas and try to play them. Uh, now, now I don't even, I'm just trying to keep it exciting because like the past year I was doing touring with a drum kit and pre-programmed tracks, which was fun for me as a drummer, but uh, I, don't, I don't know if the audience really thought it was like that hot because it was, basically it was just me playing a drum solo for 30 minutes, which made me feel really good after each show, but I didn't, I didn't have as much fun because I couldn't really explore any sounds really, it was just like this drum kit and some tracks I'd already done.
there's no one specific thing that is synthwave. Um, you can have so many different things that still fits under that umbrella. And that's what's so great about the culture. And it's not just music, it's visual. It's just an aesthetic that really no other genre has. It's getting bigger because it's a good sound. Like the music is fucking good. And it's different from what's, from what's being played. And it's, I think it's gonna be underground for a long time. It's not gonna go mainstream anytime soon. The people that are making music, the people that are listening to it, they're like 100% in it. People, people dig what they're doing. You know, they put it's a labor of love to go in and you know build these things that are you know not only new but they have that nostalgic throwback. There aren't many people I know personally that are very into it, but you can find people that are into it because you yeah, have the internet and you can connect that way. Told y'all to use it. Yeah. I'm gonna just keep this on deck. I'm gonna check in on you guys because I know this is some different shit, you know what I'm saying? That must be going on tonight. You guys fucking with it, it's cool, maybe, yeah. Great. A lot of it has to do with the accessibility of the instruments at this point in time and then like kind of this backlash against the, the digital instruments that were out there and like wanting to achieve a certain sound and then, I mean now it's just kind of ridiculous the amount of gear and things that you can really just very easily get, like get started and, and maybe find out you had the talent for something that you wouldn't have got into based on like maybe cost or just maybe you were afraid of like, well, I don't know what these things will do, but yeah, it's been, it's been fun to kind of see it all just come out of nowhere almost. And I've always sort of accepted the fact that the music I make will never really be, you know, all that. And also, I, I, sometimes I wonder if that's kind of a crutch. Because like, you know, when you're in a metal band uh, and your vocalist is screaming all the time, when people don't like your music, you're like, well, duh, it's metal. Like, nobody likes metal, you know? Uh, so sometimes I wonder if I pick these kind of extreme or niche genres so I can just be like, well, of course you don't like it. It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's too cool for you or whatever. Like, like, I feel bad for people who just write like pop music or, you know, because if someone doesn't like it, it's just because it's bad. community itself is so positive and everyone's so welcoming and they're so encouraging of others it's not it's not ego dominated it's not about you know who's bigger who's better you know I mean these guys who are like I, I mean I don't even know how many waves we've gone through of new artists at this point but you know the guys that we're listening to now that are starting to come up from you know, the deep, dark pits of the underground and are starting to get a lot of recognition. These people are just excited to be where they are. They don't, half these people that I deal with, that's, these artists, they don't even know who they are. They don't understand who they are to the fans. Um, and I think that's what makes the community so great is nobody thinks of themselves as this hierarchy or this, I'm better than this person or I have this many Spotify listeners compared. It's not a competition. It's truly a community. It's a family.
the online presence of it is amazing. It's, it, it's, I made a lot of friends. Like I'm here because of someone who likes my music and it's, it's fucking incredible. Like I never thought in my life at this point, I'm fucking 33. I'd be like, you know, getting flown out to it to play a show. It's, it's just really fucking cool. To be honest, 100% uh, honest with you, the whole reason Facehugger kind of exists as its own thing is because I started putting my music out on Twitter. Unholy Rat King instantly caught on to my music and he shared it. He like retweeted something I put up and that kind of like snowballed just a tiny little bit, but enough for me to like realize like, oh shit, people like what I'm doing and I released a full album. Most of the people that are making the music are also fans. The support is insane. The support from other artists is insane. There's so many good people in the scene. And part of me wonders if it's because we're all kind of old dudes, like, uh, we're kind of like we're over the dumb high school drama crap and so it's like you know we're doing this because we like it we know we're not gonna go get rich and famous and get all babes and stuff so it's just like we don't have to be assholes to each other Some of us literally met less than 24 hours ago, but we feel like we've known each other for years. I just want that feeling to stay bottled up inside of me all the time. Every show is different. This will never be recreated again, no matter what the lineup is, no matter when we do it again, it will never be the same. So I just want to feel that. Of course I want them to watch me, but I want them to watch everyone else, including everyone who came as far away as France to play this thing, you know? This is super important for all these people to be here and to share what they love to do for everyone else. James uh, uh, asked me if I wanted to do it, and I would pretty much do anything that James asked me to at this point. Um, the dude is, uh, he's passionate, he's capable, and uh, I, I love to see um, a non-musician who is as excited and willing to like try shit.
Last night went far better than I could have ever hoped for. Like everybody, I feel like everybody's positive energy and it really just channeled into something really special. Like I started the, the night uh, a, a bundle of nerves and I don't know, about halfway through, I realized like everybody's having a good time. Like I'm looking around, I'm like, holy crap, I did this. And I'm not a big, I did this kind of guy, but it was, it was, it was a surreal moment. It was surreal. Synthwave is so much more than just the music. Like it's, it's a family for real. The biggest thing that I'm gonna take away, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get choked up. Uh, I, uh, it was, uh, it hit me this morning that it was really special. We did something really special this weekend, and it was, uh, it's one of the proudest moments of my entire life. Like, my wife, my kids, Echo Synthetic Fest. It was, uh, yeah. I'm